Cause I've been ballin' since the days of back then Niggas what me thinking about drinking no juice and gin right, Niggas drinking the Thunderbird or Night Train Looking for the right thing, drinking like in dice games Stacking Skrilla so I'm tipping Hennessy A shot after shot like at my enemies Boom, boom Primates, we're back. Today we're talking about cutting. Uh, Amanda and Lauren uh, was asking a little bit about how to cut. Um, one of the very first things I would do when transferring from a bulk to a cut is make sure that I'm establishing my, um, my maintenance calories. So by counting calories during a bulk, it actually allows you to already know your maintenance level. This is why it's important not to go on a dirty bulk and keep control of what you're doing and making sure that you're hitting your macros, still doing the, doing the right thing. Um, once you get to the point where you want to transition to a cut, make sure you know, like I said, make sure you know your, your maintenance calories, then be able to start dropping it slowly. So 300 calories at a time if you want to retain a lot more muscle mass and do this a lot slower. I rec highly recommend that's the approach you take. Um, it's going to be a lot more effective for you. Now, in terms of other things you can do, Another thing you can do is go on uh, intermittent fasting. So the best protocol I find that works for me is the 16 and 8 window, right, by Lean Gained or uh, Martin Birkham. I'll send a link just here, just follow the link and you can, uh, you can go have a read of his articles and it explains all about how to do it. Uh, it's pretty really straightforward, honestly. It's basically an eight hour window of eating only in the day and then 16 hours fasting. So um, yeah, so you can have a read of that. So another thing you can do that's gonna help speed up the process of uh, your cut um, is, you, actually, sorry, I should stop, clarify. What you should do is you should make sure that you clean up uh, your carbohydrate sources. So ensure that you're getting a lot less sugar in your diet, um, cleaning up your protein quality sources as well. So really making sure that you're, you're getting less processed meat, um, more denser quality protein, uh, more complete sources of protein, things like that. Uh, you don't want to be eating, um, you know, a poorer quality protein coming from some snacks or some or some crap like that. You really want to make sure that, especially when you're making sure that you're hitting that one pound per lean body mass, um, you know, you really want to make sure you can build as much muscle as you can off that off that low amount of protein um, because obviously you're, you're dieting down, you're cutting down your calories. So first of all, you'd be cutting carbohydrates and making sure that they go back down now. Uh, once you've cut them enough and you can't really cut carbohydrates anymore because you need more energy still in the gym to be able to keep going and yet you still want to lose body fat, right? What you would do is you would probably drop a little bit of protein just to make sure that your calories are still being dropped, um, making sure that you're just you're only just over the amount that you need to be able to sustain your muscle mass or, um, or and, keep, and keep your body going. Um, also, you want to keep make sure that your fats are still fairly stable. You really don't want to drop your fats too low. A lot of guys, when they're competing and that kind of thing, they'll drop their fats a lot lower and they'll cause all sorts of damage to their uh, hormonal system, their testosterone levels and things like that. So, uh, you really don't want to drop your fats too low. You obviously can do things like cardio to help cause a caloric deficit um, if you don't want to eat less food. Um, generally, people that do that really haven't done their bulk properly, in my opinion. Um, when you're bulking up, you need to be able to overeat and eat at a surplus and keep raising your calories to drive your metabolism higher. Um, once you get to you know a good, decent amount of calories, then your cut becomes a lot easier because you don't have to cut all the way down past you know 2,000. You don't have to go down to 1,500 or less. You know You can really just stick to a healthy amount of calories and lose a lot of body fat still, right? And be effective. So all these things play a role in, in terms of how you do, how your cut becomes effective and things like that. So um, if you do choose to do cardio, obviously I do recommend doing a little bit of cardio, uh, whether it be low intensity or high intensity. I actually recommend doing high intensity cardio when you're doing your cut, one or two sessions a week at the max, just simply because it's going to drive your metabolism up. Now, 
some people are, you can't, some people are going to disagree and they're going to say, well, you can't measure that, you can't measure the amount of caloric deficit you're causing and things like that. Whilst true, um, it's going to it's going to speed up your metabolism and it's going to cause less uh, muscle fatigue and, and muscle loss, in my opinion, right? In my experience, you certainly want to be don't want to be doing that faster though. You want to be making sure that you've got food in your body, um, at least some fat sources and some protein sources in your body before you do a high intensity training session of about 10 to 15 minutes at the absolute max. Okay. So once or twice a week for that kind of thing. Um, but having said that, I'm going to go through my next cut, and I'm I'm, not, I'm probably still not even going to touch cardio, right? So if anyone knows me, they know that I I don't do much cardio, right? Uh, it's just that I, I I don't need to. If you if you watch what you're doing, if you're watching the kind of food you're having in your diet, then you just you don't need to do that. Um, and you still can keep a, an amazing physique. Another thing too, if you're dieting down um, and essentially you're getting to the point where you've, you've gotten too low calories and you're still really hungry and you get into those situations that you need to fill up um, your stomach, I highly recommend having things like green vegetables or cauliflower or things like that. Um, things that, and just overload more of it per meal. So if you're spreading it your day out to have, you know, two meals, three meals, four meals, um, you know, I, I highly recommend that you just add in a lot more vegetables. Another, another one really good trick that works really well is that a lot of the bro scientists will say, you know, the six meals a day thing is, is perfect, blah, blah, blah. When you're on a cut, the problem is with having six meals a day is that one meal will not fill you up and you'll get that taste for food and you'll want to eat more food. Um, and then so you'll start overeating. You know, you, you potentially could start overeating. So the best way to approach it is by having one or two meals a day, primate type meals, like big meals, fill your stomach up, satisfy your hormone levels or your, your, um, your body in general. Um, and that way you'll be full for hours without the need to feel like you need to eat more food. Uh, really good trick, you know, do the fasting in the morning and train, train midday or late afternoon and then have your first meal at say three or four o'clock. Um, you'll be surprised, you know, and you'll, your body will react really well and you'll go to bed on a uh, full stomach, you know, and you know, you can, you can have those last little bit of carbohydrates at night time to help you drop your blood sugar levels and get you into a, a sleeping state so you can go to bed and have a nice good rest so you're ready to train the next day. So in my opinion that's the best approach to take for a cut. So essentially you are, you know, if you're going to be training fasted, you want to be having BCAs in the morning or uh, you know, some sort of way to make sure that you're not going too catabolic uh, during, during the morning hours. So I highly recommend having some BCAs or something like that, something that's not going to spike your insulin, insulin at all or very, very little amount, um, you know, and, not, and, not, and still keeping that fasting, fasting state. So make sure you do that, give that a shot, and let me know how you go. All right, I'm going to show you a photo now of what I, what I looked like when I got down to about 6% body fat. Yeah. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was around 5% body fat. Uh -huh. Bam, here's a photo right there. Um, that's what I was looking like at around 5% body fat uh, on my first cut. Um, that was just when I started bulking, only just within like a few weeks or two weeks or something like that. So, um, you know, keep in, keep in mind, you can do it too. You can get lean, you know, I'll just follow the stuff, follow my advice and you'll be fine. You'll get there. All right, guys. So, uh, be sure to comment, like, subscribe to my stuff. Um, if you got any questions, just you know, let me know. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, see you in the next video, guys. Ciao. Yeah, we gonna bust a little something like this. Me and my nigga, Mr. Dow. First, I gotta give me some weed before I wreck this bitch.